So finally, the people of Catalonia have voted and now the results have come in and it turns out that most people in Catalonia have voted for the pro-independence parties and that doesn't actually surprise anyone. It doesn't surprise me and I'm pretty sure it did not surprise the actual Spanish government itself. But you know what? The key thing is the actual ruling party in Catalonia the biggest party there actually, it actually lost a lot of ground in terms of support by the people in that party, by the people of that nation and you know what this whole issue of Catalonian independence has raised a much more fundamental question, a much larger question and that question is what does the future of Europe look like? I mean it's not just Catalonia that's demanding independence from Spain and look at it, the Scottish are also asking for independence and you've got that Basque region as well is asking for independence in other places in Europe and that includes Russia as well, by the way. I mean, bear in mind that the Spanish constitution has made it illegal for anyone to demand independence and seek a referendum on independence. But you know what, looking at the future, the Spanish are going to have to change the constitution one way or another because if they don't and the Catalonians don't get their independence, then hey, the situation in the future looks really grim for Spain. I mean, you're going to have to be looking for, at another civil war right here. The one in 1936 killed how many people? Half a million people died in Spain between 1936 and 1939 in the Spanish Civil War. And that's a lot of people to die, especially if it's just brothers killing brothers. That's just, wow, it's shocking to be honest. So hopefully scenes like that don't happen again. And that's why I think the constitution will have to be changed because those memories of the 1930s are still fresh in some people's minds. Even though some of them weren't even born, the effects of that war are still being felt even today. But you know what, yeah, to be honest, I think Spain has failed Catalonia. That's right, I said it. Spain has failed Catalonia. I mean, if Spain does not want Catalonia to leave, they're going to have to negotiate how much tax they actually take from Catalonia because if they don't do that then obviously these calls for independence will keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger and the funny thing is the people calling most of the people calling for Catalonian independence are not from Catalonia themselves they're actually you know migrants from other parts of Spain and that's actually very ironic and I think the issue of immigration is actually central to that as well. It's not just the financial, you know, question. It's the immigration issue as well because, you know, there aren't that many immigrants in Catalonia. And if you look at the rest of Spain, wow, you find them everywhere. And, you know, you're getting that kind of image as well that, oh, immigrants are coming to our country to take from us, to take our wealth from us. I mean, think about it. For years and years, Catalonia has been the powerhouse for the Spanish economy. So if the Spanish government does not take this seriously and actually makes moves to negotiate with the Catalonian leaders, they're going to lose it and independence is going to come, whether it's illegal in the eyes of the constitution or not. It's going to happen. I mean, to be honest, I do understand why they're calling for independence. I don't blame them. I mean, they've been, they've been giving more than they've been getting back from Spain, from Madrid. And the government in Madrid really needs to do some soul searching because, you know, people in Catalonia are saying, we do not hate Spain. We are not against Spain. We are against the government in Madrid, which is ignoring our calls to renegotiate the tax deal and how much tax Catalonia actually pays to Madrid. And that's all they're asking for, you know? It doesn't make, it doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them bad Europeans. However, having said that, the people of Catalonia must not forget one thing. If they do somehow get independence, I don't know whether they will or not, but if they do get independence, they're going to have to remember that they're going to have to share the national debt that Spain currently has. And yeah, that's one thing they're going to have to face and negotiate and contend with. And they're going to have to swallow that pill, no matter how large it might turn out to be. And that's one thing they should not forget. However, I do think the people of Catalonia are intelligent and I do think that they are aware of it and eventually they will see a way through it. I mean, this is going to be really bitter. I mean, I can't even picture Spain losing a city like Barcelona, just like that. And the next thing you know, Spain is going to be a city without Barcelona. What kind of Spain doesn't have Barcelona in it? That's just going to be weird. 
I mean, it's only recently that Barcelona football team has actually fielded, you know, an entirely homegrown team. I mean, they were all Spanish, apart from obviously Lionel Messi because he's from Argentina. But he actually moved to Barcelona when he was just 12 years old. So technically, he's as Barcelonian as anybody else, to be honest. But having said that, it's a really remarkable feat. You know, it's a really remarkable feat that, that Barcelona has fielded an entirely homegrown team. I mean, judging by the way football is increasingly cosmopolitan these days. I mean, just look at the Chelsea football team. Just on Sunday, they were playing Manchester City, right? And in that match playing Manchester City, they only fielded one English player, Ashley Cole, and that was it. All of them were not English at all. And that says quite a lot, to be honest. I mean, that really begs the question, what is the point of having youth club academies if you're not going to feel those, those players are grooming up to play for Chelsea? I don't think it's Chelsea that needs to just ask that question. I think there's a lot of teams that really need to ask that question. Why do you need youth club academies if you're not going to use any of the players to play in your football teams? At the end of the day, words don't change the world actions change the world so people calling for independence are going to have to take some sort of action i mean obviously for now they're going to have to look at all the legal means and try to find a loophole or an answer of getting independence without having any blood being spilled and you know another civil war because that would be just unfortunate and it could be contagious beyond you know spain and a lot of questions start rising and you know, the, obviously, I can foresee the Catalonians saying, wait a minute. I can see the Catalonians in the near future saying, oh, wait a minute. The Scottish people are allowed to have a referendum on independence. So if they can have that and they're inside Europe, why can't we have a referendum on whether we want to be part of Spain or not? I mean, it's not double standard. If Scotland are allowed to have a referendum on independence, then we are as well irregardless of what the constitution of Spain actually says. And yeah, that's going to be a tough question to answer. A really, really tricky question to answer. And say Catalonia does get independence. What about all the other regions of Spain? What about all the other places of Spain? The Basque region and Granada as well. Who knows, Granada might stop demanding independence as well and next thing you know the Muslims will be coming back to Granada and taking it all over all over again and Mohammed the 12th will come back and rule from the dead and whatnot <laughs> actually I don't think that happened Mohammed the 12th is gone he ain't gonna come back I mean it was a bit humiliating though the way Ferdinand made Mohammed the 12th run away all the way back to Morocco just like that after Mohammed the 12th was defeated by Ferdinand Ferdinand signed a treaty and promised not to oppress the Muslims and said that they're free to actually practice their religion and keep it that way. But then after the treaty was signed, they actually broke that promise and, and for Muslims were actually forced to convert to Catholicism and obviously they refused. Some of them did, but some of them had to flee all the way across into Morocco in Northern Africa. I mean, it's obvious that Spain is full of a history full of broken promises and broken plans and broken dreams and something is going to have to be done in order to put things right because a lot was made wrong by the lots of dictators like Franco, even though he did get support from Adolf Hitler and Italy and whatnot. But either way, foreign influences have always been affecting every nation on earth either way. But at the end of the day, people within those nations are the ones who have the power to make the final decision and the final change. It's interesting to see how Spain is so fragile in the face of economic, you know, dissent because it was just after the Great Depression is when the Spanish Civil War actually started and you had, yes, all these half a million people killed and whatnot and you had Republicans versus Nationalists and all these people and foreigners in Mexico supporting them and so to sum up at the end of the day it's going to be interesting to see if the Catalonians can actually talk the Spanish government into changing the constitution so they can have a referendum on independence but that's easier said than done because there are a lot of people outside Catalonia who do not want to see Catalonia getting independence 
and they'll believe that and pursue that if it kills them so fingers crossed things don't go really bad because there are already enough problems to deal with as it is and obviously if you look at history the idea of a civil war means that the possibility of fascism rising again is a very real threat as well because when the Spanish Civil War started and finished, who rose after that? It was Franco, a dictator. He didn't care about anybody but himself and his party. And yeah, it was the same thing in Germany. After the Civil War, you got a dictator come up, even though it wasn't officially a civil war. But if you look at the facts, it was technically a civil war and other parts of the world as well. Every time you have a civil war, a dictator is most likely to come out of it. So fingers crossed that the Catalonians get what they want and fingers crossed that people in different regions around the world can get to decide their own future. If they want out of the system, then it's their choice to want out of the system. I mean, it's no one's right to decide for them. It's no one's right to say to them, wait a minute, that's suicidal. We can't stop you from committing suicide. But hey, you're talking about millions of people here. So millions of people know know what they're doing and are voting in such large numbers you're gonna have to say okay hey if that's what you want if that's what you think is right for you it's your choice not mine and the spanish government in madrid will only have itself to blame if independence of catalonia does come about